And as James concludes his book or his letter to the Christians, he reminds them of a very basic principle of something that is foundational to our faith. He, he reminds the Christians that if, if they are going to be able to have the power and the ability to go through hard times or to live out their faith or to tame their tongues or to be the true followers of Jesus, he reminds them that the source of all that power and ability comes through prayer. You see, he recognizes the fact that, you see, it's, it's during prayer that you get refreshed, you get revived, you get strengthened, you get encouraged, you, you get empowered to be all that God has called you to be. It, it is through prayer that you and I are able to connect with our God. Whatever we need in life, God has provided it for us. And the way to reach out there is through prayer and faith in Jesus. The Bible tells us so clearly that it's through prayer that we reach out to God. Jesus says, whatever you shall ask of my Father in my name. That is what? Prayer. A time of prayer. Is the Bible tells us also that he supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory. How do you tap into that provision unless you go to him in faith through prayer? And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to, I just want to share briefly that, that, that if we are going to receive the provision, if we are going to be that all that God wants us to be, if he's going to meet us in our point of need, we must learn to pray with faith. James put it this way in James chapter 5 and verses 13 all the way to 18. He said, is there anyone in trouble? Are you going through any tough time? Are you going through a hard situation? What are the trials you are facing? He says, do what? Pray. Are you happy? Is all well with you? Is, I, I, is your family fine? Is your job okay? Basically, your life is good. What should you do? Sing a song of psalms or praise unto our God. In a nutshell, he's saying in all of life's circumstances, do what? Pray. Now, let me just, for a moment, before I continue in the scripture, it says, uh, you know, I, I just want to just lay the foundation of prayer, the, the meaning of prayer, just, just for a moment. I just want you to know that prayer is, is basically your heartfelt communication to God. If it's a hard time, you pour out your heart the way it is. If it isn't a good time, you pour out your heart the way it is. It, it is your heartfelt communication to God. He continues in verses 14 and, and James is telling them, is, is any one of you sick? What should you do? Let him call the elders of the church and, the, and they will pray over him and anoint him with oil. And what does it next say? In the name of Jesus. Elders are basically leaders within the church. And today we're going to have some leaders come up, some of our leaders here come up. And, 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 and if you're sick in your body, if you're sick emotionally, we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to anoint you and we're going to believe God and, and pray over you. Because verse 15 then says, and the prayer offered in faith. I want you to notice, the oil has no power. It's symbolic of what's going to happen into your life. But the power comes from when we pray in what? Faith. For the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, the Bible says. And the Lord will raise him up. And just in case you have sinned, you will be forgiven. The community table reminds us that, 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 that his blood was shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Don't carry the guilt. Don't carry the shame. He dealt with that on the cross. He continues and then continues and asks and says, therefore confess your sins one to another. Sometimes we're afraid to do this, but the Bible says the remedy to some of the situations in our life is to confess. Open up. Open up to somebody. Tell them, man, I, I've either tripped, I've messed up. Pray with me. And when you do that, there will be healing. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. I, I, like, I like words. The word effective means it is adequate to produce the desired results. Hallelujah. The prayer of the righteous is adequate to produce <laughs> the required results. Think of Elijah, he asks the question. He was just a man like us. He prayed 
honestly. To pray honestly means you pray from your heart. You are passionate. You are, you, it is heartfelt. You are honest. You are sincere. He prayed honestly that it would not rain, and it did rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. The underlying principle for today that I want you to have is that every believer's prayer, every believer's prayer, is adequate to produce the intended results when you pray with faith. Hallelujah. Because he says that Elijah was just like Ken. I mean, we know Elijah's story, right? Elijah raised the boy from dead, from, 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 uh, uh, from, from, from the dead. He, he called fire from heaven. I don't know how many times he, I mean, he, he did many miracles. He walked through the Jordan River on dry grounds. Many miracles are attached to Elijah. Yet, James says he was just like you. He had fears. He had frustrations. He had problems. He, I mean, all these things. He even ran away. He was threatened by a, a, a woman. And he had just done the most powerful miracle. And a woman threatened him. Elijah ran away. He's as human as we are. I mean, he, he, he went hungry. He got angry. He even went to the toilet. But when Elijah prayed, results showed up. And James is telling us the reason for that really. One is the fact that Elijah was righteous. He had a right stand with God. He, he, him and God were in the correct books. That's the beginning point. They were in correct books. But James then adds and tells us really and shows us that the reason why this actually happened is because it's possible to be, have a right stand with God, but your prayer is not in faith. So he says if your prayer is offered in faith, it will be effective. It will produce the desired or intended results. I want to just talk about praying with faith in a moment. I don't want to take long, but I want you to catch this because as we pray, I want you to pray with this mind. To pray with faith, to pray with faith is praying with the confidence, with the assurance, with the belief and trust that God is willing and able to meet your needs. Hallelujah. You can almost, almost quote Hebrews 11 and 1. That's basically what it is. It's being confident that God will meet your needs. In Luke chapter 5, there's a story of the man who was full of leprosy. The Bible says, while Jesus was entering a certain town, this man came and fell at his feet, and he said this, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me well. Kind of like, one, he came knowing that God can. But he was wondering, will he? He did not doubt God's ability. Mm -mm. He was only one finding out, will he? And Jesus said, reached out, touched him and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And instantly the leprosy left his body. I want to tell you today, in case you have doubted if God is willing, God is willing. And today is the day for that salvation of your situation. I do not know what healing you need. Maybe it's in your body. Maybe it's in your spirit, in your emotion. Whatever thing it is, God is willing and able to. Just don't come doubting. James again tells us, don't doubt. Don't doubt because when we doubt... God, God, God won't release it. He wants the people who are confident of the fact that he can and he will. Hallelujah. But another dimension to praying with faith is that you pray focused on God's will and not on your problem. Don't, don't pray focused on what you're going through. Pray focused on what God says about your situation. You, you pray in accordance to the will of God. First John puts it this way and he tells us so clearly in John, first John chapter 5 and 14 to 15. Now, this is the confidence. Hallelujah. This is the confidence that we have in him. Praying in faith or with faith is always focused on who God is. Faith 
or praying with faith is not having faith in faith. In other words, you are so convinced of the fact that your faith. No, 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 no. He's simply saying, be convinced of the fact that God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, is, it begins with God. It ends with God. So he says this, now that we, uh, this confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He does. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. You see, God through Isaiah in 55 um, told Told, uh, said this, that my word will not go out and return to me without results. <laughs> Some of you know it and say, it says it will not return to me void or empty. It really means it will not return to me without results. It says it will go out and accomplish the purpose for which I am sending it. So that means even as we pray today, when we come with the confidence that God is willing and God is able to, we also must come with the confidence that when we will declare God's word of our situation, it will come to pass. Because we pray according to his will. What's the will of God in your situation? And when I talk about the will of God, I'm really talking about God's word. His written word. It's there. It's really there. It's already there. And it's okay to ask God, God, what's your will where I am? Because some of these places are a bit confusing. You're in a tight spot and you're thinking, okay, God, what, what's your will in this place? Ask him. Ask him. It's okay. He will always confirm it with his word. But what's the will of God where you are? What's his will? But what does God say about your situation? What has he declared? What has he promised about where you are? Are you sick in your body? Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2 says, But to you who fear my name, if you fear the Lord, if you are righteous today, if you are born again, to you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in its what? Wings. You shall go out and grow fat like stall fed cows. I know many people are trying to go on a diet. The Bible says you grow fat. In other words, you will become what? Healthy. By his stripes you are healed. Jesus told the lady who came to him asking to be healed, said that healing is bread for the children. Are you a child of God? It is your bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you in trouble? Are you in some form of trial? Psalm 46 and verse 1 says, and he will be your present help. Okay, it's another one. But Psalm 50 and verse 15 says, pray to me when you are in trouble. Can you read the last part for yourself? I will deliver you and you will honor me. <laughs> what trouble are you in? He says what? Pray. I will deliver you. Hallelujah. Our God has already given us the assurance that when we pray, he will come through. Psalm 46 and 1 says that, that, that God is your ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, do what? Pray. What's your situation? What are you going through? What's that tough thing that's bothered you? What's that thing that has held you back? The Bible says do what? Pray. Are you broken? Have you been bruised? Have you been abandoned? Do you, feel, do you feel rejected, dejected? Do you feel emotionally low and emotionally down? The Bible tells us something very clear about that. The Bible says this. Could you throw that out for me, please? Hallelujah. He says in Hebrews 13, 5 to 6, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will be with you, says the Lord. So I do not know where you are today. I do not know what you're going through. But one thing I know is that when we pray, God answers. 
I do not know what problem has disturbed you all this while. Maybe it's sickness, maybe it's whatever it is. Whatever thing has latched on you for long today, I want you to know this. When we come to God in faith, Meaning when we come with the confidence, the assurance that he's willing and able to declare in his word over our life, we will receive our deliverance. And I'm going to actually ask us at this point to actually do stand on our feet. Because we actually want to spend time in prayer. I want to read you the last verse as you prepare your hearts to come before God. I want to read this last verse to you so that, so that as you approach God, you come with that confidence today. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter, th um, chapter 4 and 16, let us then approach the throne of grace with what? God is telling us, come confidently. So that you may what? Receive mercy and find grace to help you in your time. Of need. Oh, hallelujah. I do know one thing. God is here. Where two or three are gathered in his presence, there he is. 